Rabies is an evil disease. The kind that attacks you when you're wounded, drives you mad, and hides the boots of Santa on the 24th of December. Where are my boots, woman? I've got to get going. If it were a man and you bumped into him in an alley, you could freely beat him to a pulp. It's not just that you wouldn't get arrested, but you wouldn't have to pay taxes anymore either. And you'd get a free pizza too. But would it lend itself a movie in which packs of middle-class rabid zombies run around foaming at the mouth, saying Hah! and no one understands that all they want is a toothbrush, then Dustin Hoffman yells, General, with all due respect, f*** you sir, and everything turns out fine, end credits, size, popcorn flavored burps. Probably not. However ugly a disease it may be, it doesn't spread easily, it can be prevented, and it doesn't have a striking presence in most countries. The majority of cases are reported from Asia and Africa, with India being the most severely affected. The disease caused more problems in the past, but provisions such as mandatory dog vaccination and state-funded oral vaccination of wildlife have successfully reduced the prevalence of rabies. So, when your dog gets its yearly shot, you're not only getting rid of that disgusting money, blech, but you're making the world a healthier place as well. Bravo. Rabies is caused by a virus. It's tiny, stylishly bullet-shaped, loves death metal and Mary Poppins Jim, the movie. Jiminy, Jim, Jiminy. It's not too picky, it can infect plenty of animal species from rats to pokemons, but varying by location, it's mostly seen in foxes, dogs, raccoons and bats. Rabies is largely spread by biting, as the saliva of the infected individual contains the virus in masses, and the injury makes it possible for it to Ow. enter the body. And besides, any disease celebrity worth mentioning is spread through bites. At the bite site, the virus is thought to multiply in skin and muscle cells first, which it hates more than fermented bean salad, and in addition, the immune cells of the organism are constantly on the alert in the neighborhood. This is why it packs up and skedaddles at the first opportunity. It penetrates the nerves, where the immune system can't follow, and then sets out towards the brain so fast, its chest gets wounded by the wind. The latency period is subject to the distance between the bite site and the brain. I've been bitten by a rabbit fox. Oh my god, where? In Alaska, but don't worry, I'm already in Wolfenschiess in Switzerland. There is no way rabies could catch up with me here. <laughs> Being bitten in the face can lead to symptoms of rabies within a week while those bitten on a toe may go symptomless for as long as three months. On reaching the brain, the virus will throw a mind-blowing party. It multiplies in the nerve cells and upsets the functioning of the brain. The new virus particles travel to more body parts along the nerves, including salivary glands, where they get excreted with the saliva. Symptoms of rabies may vary by species and individuals, but they have much in common. Agitation, depression, aggression, disturbed consciousness and unusual behavior are typical phenomena. As the condition is getting worse, partial paralysis and breathing difficulty appear. Excessive salivation, a broken voice, and in attempts of swallowing, painful spasms of the throat are experienced. The latter can be brought about by the mere sight of water and the thought of drinking. Doctor, my husband has disturbed consciousness and a fear of water. Can it be rabies? I'd say alcoholism. In the final stage of the disease, there follow convulsions, later on total paralysis and a loss of consciousness. At this point, death isn't far away. Uh, I'm here. Individuals of some species stand a chance of surviving rabies. Did I ever tell you that in the summer of 67 I had been bitten by a rabid archaeologist? But in the case of dogs, cats and humans, this is extremely rare. Once rabid, in a couple of weeks, they will die. 
As far as we know, rabies causes mainly malfunctioning of the brain without considerable destruction of nerve cells. This is what the only therapy thought to be effective makes use of. In the course of the Milwaukee Protocol, the patient is put in an induced coma, thus taking away control over the body from a brain-run amok, and the wait begins. They are waiting for the body to overcome the virus, hoping the brain has not turned into a shambles in the meantime and a bit of refacing and a new roof insulation will restore habitable conditions. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee Protocol is not more reliable than pre-election promises and beer shall be free and it's as feasible as wellness space travel for middle-aged overweight men. Um, this is plain routine, right? <laughs> For the past few years, it hasn't been looked upon very favorably, because recent scientific results suggest it may not be worth a damn after all. It is never applied to animals, not least because the treatment of rabid animals is forbidden in most countries. Luckily, the prevention of rabies is pretty easy. That's what vaccines are for, and in lots of countries, giving them to pet dogs is mandatory. The vaccinated dog will not catch rabies, even if it picks a fight with the neighbor's illegally held rabbit grizzly. And a dog incapable of catching rabies cannot infect humans either. Government regulations will tell you the exact protocol, but most countries prescribe one shot every year or every three years. From time to time, some countries will provide vaccination for wild animals as well, with a vaccine mixed in super stinky edible bait thrown from airplanes. <laughs> the washing machine. A muzzling order prevents dogs from eating the bait. But what happens if despite all precautions, you get bitten by a rabid animal? Say, by a fox in a downtown cafe. Does it mean the end? Over and done with? And do I have to tell mom? Mom, I'm rabid. It comes from your father's side. Lucky for you, while the virus is still on its way in the nerves from the bite side to the brain, there is time to intervene. Legate the affected limb, bite on a stick, grab an axe and uh, go see a doctor instead, who will save your life by vaccinating you. The vaccine prepares the body for the fight with rabies, so when the virus reaches the brain, it stands no chance of spreading. Since the length of time spent in the nerves may vary, vaccinations are started immediately, even before a diagnosis is confirmed. So how do you come to a diagnosis? To diagnose rabies in time, that is, before it reaches the brain, is only possible in Star Trek. Lieutenant? Your leg is rabid. Therefore, attention is turned to the perpetrator, the potential source of rabies. What bit you? The terrible Rabilla. <laughs> Provided it didn't run off very far. If both symptoms and case history point to rabies, the histological examination of the brain and the experimental infection of mice with a concoction made of the brain tissue render reliable diagnosis possible. Animal welfare regulations only allow mice with a life sentence in jail to be used for this purpose. Even so, the technique is gradually replaced with the experimental infection of cell cultures. Being diagnosed rabid by these examinations means that you are dead. Well, duh, they can only be performed on dead subjects. Other methods to confirm suspicion of rabies that are more patient-friendly include the analysis of various body fluids, but they are not very reliable and are mainly used in cases where post-mortem testing is not an option, like in human cases. Depending on which country you live in, the process of dealing with rabies may be heavily regulated. Generally speaking, an animal suspected of rabies faces the law's <clears throat> overwhelming urge to get a confirmation with the reliable methods detailed before, and we know what kind of subjects those require. What this means for a rabies suspect varies with national legislation, 
but we can safely say that dark clouds and sad contrabass melodies are to be expected. Whether to label someone's pet suspected of rabies is a tough decision for veterinarians. Whatever they decide, getting it wrong is worse than being roundhouse kicked in the ass by Chuck Norris. All this fuss and nail biting can be avoided by preventive vaccination against rabies. Whether it's compulsory or not, it can be recommended for anybody or anything at constant risk, such as hunters, zoologists and Batman. I'm Batman. And cats. If you own a cat and you don't keep it nailed to the living room wall, you'd better have it vaccinated. It comes across lots of things in nature, such as voles, rats, politicians and god only knows what. And uh, who needs a mad cat? <laughs> Not even for free. I haven't gone mad and you shouldn't either. To sum up, rabies is a lethal disease spread through biting. It's slightly worse than visiting the dentist. It's practically incurable, but can be prevented with vaccination even following a bite. Up to a certain point. Even if not mandated by law, vaccination is recommended in high-risk scenarios. Take care. The technical information presented in this video was fact-checked by Dr. Tomasz Bokwini, PhD, virologist, veterinarian, demon hunter. I thank him very much. Mm -hmm.